Indian Prime Minister is all set to visit Nepal. This will be his third visit to the country. The first time he visited country, he was on a bilateral visit. Then, of course, for the SARC summit and now again for this uh, bilateral visit. He will be visiting three cities and will be accorded two civic receptions. With me is the Foreign Minister of Nepal to speak about uh, the visit and also India-Nepal ties. Sir, welcome to Vion. My first question, of course, is the Prime Minister of India comes to Nepal in a matter of just one month after the Nepal's Prime Minister visited New Delhi. So what will be the key focus and deliverables from this visit which is due to happen? Uh, you know, uh, such type of uh, high-profile visits uh, contribute to strengthen the uh, mutual understanding, uh, friendship and relation. Uh, this is a type of manifestations of our uh, how uh, deep and how, how wide is our relations. Uh, he is starting uh, his visit from Janakpur, which you know is a very important uh, historic city and a center of uh, Mithila civilization. Uh, that's why uh, this visit not only uh, will contribute the bilateral uh, development partnership, but will contribute as well as uh, to the uh, cultural bonds, which are very uh, unique in our relations and uh, people to people relations as well. So we uh, have high hopes uh, by this visit. High hopes from this visit, but uh, uh, sir, tell me how can India help in Nepal's development needs? Uh, India is uh, uh, one of the largest development partner of Nepal and one of the uh, largest trade partner as well. Uh, so far, a uh, few uh, very important uh, projects have been completed, uh, some are undergoing, but uh, needn't say uh, that uh, the implementation uh, of the previous agreements are not uh, in the level which we expect, so we have to expedite uh, to implement in a timely manner uh, those uh, projects which are uh, Either uh, have, we have um, make an agreement or understanding, or in the, they are in the process. Second, a lot of poten potentials uh, have to uh, tap. We have little bit lagging behind to unleash those uh, potentials which uh, uh, both countries can uh, utilize. So uh, this time we will uh, focus or concentrate. Uh, on the exploring new areas of cooperation. Uh, third, uh, unfortunately, uh, Nepal is facing a huge trade imbalance with India. Uh, so we are asking um, Indian government to make necessary, uh, to uh, start necessary steps so that Nepal can be benefited by the in, uh, development of India and uh, we can have more uh, smooth uh, movement of our goods and services to Indian market. Mm. So a lot of things on the table, but uh, uh, what's your view about India's neighborhood first policy? Because uh, India has been trying to help its neighbors. Perhaps uh, India was uh, the first country to uh, send help when the country was, when Nepal was struck by an earthquake. What do you have to say about that? Uh, we are very thankful uh, about the generous support uh, in our hard time. Uh, and as I already mentioned, uh, India is uh, one of the largest development partner. But a uh, lot of things uh, have to do, on, uh, have to do uh, especially in the area of connectivity. Uh, although our um, terrain is comparatively good um, in uh, the border side, mm -hmm. but uh, the cross-border uh, railways, cross-border uh, highways, cross-border uh, transmission lines, cross-border uh, pipelines, uh, a lot of things have to be done so that uh, we can um, utilize uh, optimum, utilize, utilize the uh, potential we have. Mm -hmm. So um, we expect more foreign direct investment from Indian business community, 
that's why last month uh, our prime minister have a very good interaction with in the indian uh, business community and we have asked them uh, because nepal is a very uh, nice place uh, to invest a type of uh, virgin land uh, and so many areas we have where the foreign investors can uh, come and uh, they can uh, generate a uh, benefit which can be shared uh, in an equitable manner and uh, Indian government uh, from its side also can help. So we are expecting uh, more partnership in the connectivity, in the higher sector, in the uh, agriculture and other areas as well. So how will this visit uh, uh strengthen the ties because we know in the past the ties between Delhi and Kathmandu haven't been very good. Uh, yes, there were some um, problems, some ups and downs uh, a few years uh, back. Uh, I think both sides and more especially the Indian government, Indian side has uh, drawn uh, some conclusions, some lessons what went wrong. I do not want to uh, make uh, fresh uh, comments on that regard because uh, past is past. We have uh, learned a lot. So based upon those lessons, uh, we should look forward to future where uh, uh, we can do a lot of things uh, on the benefit of uh, the people of the both countries. Uh, now we should focus basically on the uh, development partnership and economic uh, areas. Traditionally, uh, the main uh, component of our lessons was cultural, uh, spiritual and people-to-people -people lessons. Th this will be remain a very important part of our lessons, but uh, the um, uh, time requires more focus on the uh, economic side to development side so that um, both countries uh, can be benefited. So will it be right to say, sir, that the memories of the past events, especially after 2015, are now erased or they are they, they are something that nobody, no sides will be keen to discuss? Um, I think uh, we should f uh, forget. Uh, they will be in, uh, remain as a memory, but uh, that cannot be uh, overshadow uh, on the current task or current responsibilities and the future course of our relations. So Nepal from its part uh, is ready to have a broader partnership on the development sector. Uh, definitely Nepal has some uh, concerns and some standpoints, you know. Nepal always um, pursues uh, independent foreign policy. Uh, we uh, have time and again asked our neighbors, our friendly countries, uh, that Nepal's uh, relations with uh, its neighbors or friendly countries will be based upon uh, the respect of the sovereignty, uh, territorial integrity, non-interference, mutual trust and mutual respect for the, each other's concerns. Uh, Nepal uh, will always be very uh, concerned, uh, um, sensitive about the uh, con genuine concerns of the its uh, friendly, uh, its friends or neighbors, and it will never allow its soil to be misused against uh, any uh, neighboring country. So, having a very independent foreign policy, having a policy of enmity with all and enmity with none, uh, we will pursue uh, the uh, foreign policy, uh, balanced foreign policy based upon uh, the uh, national interest of Nepal. So um, these are a uh, few uh, fundamentals uh, based upon which we uh, deal with other countries. So uh, now we should uh, look forward, we should uh, focus on the future perspective, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, Nepal doesn't have only one neighbor, it has two neighbors, India and China, and these are two big countries in Asia, rising powers in Asia. But there's a growing sense that Kathmandu is moving closer towards Beijing. 
<laughs> there's a smile of course but what would you like to say yeah actually uh, it is uh, wrong perceptions uh, you just mentioned that we have two neighbors uh, nepal enjoys a very good and friendly relations with both of our neighbors and uh, the relation with both countries is very very important because uh, nepal wants Uh, to be uh, benefited by the rapid economic growth and uh, uh, development which uh, both countries are uh, um, uh, enjoying now. So Nepal wants to be more connected with both countries. Nepal wants to be uh, invite uh, more investment from both sides. Nepal wants to be uh, to uh, have a easy access to their markets. Uh, so there is no any room or reason or ground to be uh, make any that type of sense that whether nepal will tilt it uh, either this side or that side nepal will focus basically on its own interest and uh, will uh, continue its good relations with um, both of our neighbors continue good relations with both the neighbors in new delhi and beijing but you are increasing your connectivity plans with china can you just shed some light on that uh, not only with china you know we have a very uh, broader framework uh, which uh, we call bbin framework mm -hmm. with uh, india bangladesh bhutan and uh, nepal mm -hmm. uh, although bhutan has been uh, has withdrawn its uh, commitment from uh, that uh, framework uh, now it will be a uh, a bin uh, framework bangladesh india and nepal <coughs> which comprise basically two components one is uh, the road connectivity and second is the grid uh, uh, electric gr grid connectivity that is also very very important uh, similarly we uh, have been a part of um, the uh, uh, belt and road initiatives of china proposed by the china and we also want to be a more broader connectivity with china so uh, we want connectivity with both sides and beyond them so that we uh, can easily uh, enjoy uh, the right of uh, the landlocked country and we can easily uh, connect ourselves to the uh, emerging uh, global markets interesting sir uh, but uh Nepal even though it has two neighbors it's part of a region which has other countries also and relationship does impact uh, either ways the first leader to visit uh, Nepal after the prime minister KP Oli took charge was a Pakistani prime minister i mean can you shed light on the india uh, on the uh, Nepal Pakistan relationship and uh, what ties Nepal wants to have with Pakistan uh pakistan uh, is the one of the uh, friendly country in this region uh, we have good relations and uh, having a member of the sarc and other uh, multilateral forum as well uh, we uh, share uh, similar views on especially on the development and uh, peace uh the major concern uh, during uh, the uh, pakistani prime minister visit was uh, one uh, he um, uh, congratulated uh, the newly appointed uh, prime minister kapil sharma oli and uh, expressed his uh, um, desire to enhance uh, the mutual cooperation and second was uh, how to uh, reactivate uh, reactivate the sarc Uh, you know uh, sarc um, is a uh, one of the most important platform uh, to almost 1.8 billion uh, people mm -hmm. of the south asia uh, out of uh, that population almost 1/4 is 1/4 uh, um, is below the poverty line and it is a big challenge to the policy makers of the all uh, sarc members and the governments how we can uh, tackle uh, that problem uh, the uh, postponement of the uh, sarc summit which was uh, set uh, to pakistan that was uh, been postponed Uh, so pakistani uh, concern was how we can uh, make uh, this platform active and nepal uh, uh, told them that 
uh, Nepal also uh, want to have an active SARC and we will discuss with the all members because uh, although we are the uh, chair of the SARC mm -hmm. but uh, uh, all uh, decisions are taken by consensus uh, and we uh, have uh, asked the uh, concerning uh, governments and uh, officials that uh, this platform should be activized if there are differences uh, dialogue is the uh, best alternatives so let us uh, sit in the table let us mitigate the differences and let us make uh, this platform active so are you engaging in some kind of back channel diplomacy with islamabad and new delhi so that this sark summit happens uh, not uh, exactly, but uh, we have asked uh, Sar uh, Secretary General and we have uh, asked the um, uh, concerning uh, leaders of the um, both countries and other uh, countries as well to explore a new uh, idea so that uh, we can uh, rebuild and the trust again and uh, we can uh, activate uh, this arc uh, in the uh, interest of the uh, people residing here. But are you hopeful that SARC summit will happen? Uh, uh, we uh, do believe that uh, member countries will uh, explore a new uh, idea, mm -hmm. although uh, we are also very careful about the existing uh, differences. Mm -hmm. uh, so, member countries. Mm -hmm. You know about the existing differences and perhaps the differences have to be solved together and to sit sit in, in a room and solve the problems. But so other than SAG, then we have another grouping called BIMSTEC, which India is very keen on. Um, can you tell us the status about BIMSTEC? And I believe a summit is going to also happen. When is this summit is going to happen? Uh, we are uh, in close contact with the uh, member countries. Uh, Nepal is also the chair of the uh, BIMSTEC and we, uh, if uh, all member uh, countries are agreed upon, uh, we will uh, be very happy to organize the uh, BIMSTEC uh, summit this year. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but uh, what's the difference between BIMSTEC and SARC or what is the complementarities or commonalities between BIMSTEC and SARC? Uh, we don't want to compare uh, because both have some uh, very positive uh, aspect and some constant as well. So we uh, give uh, importance to both uh, forum uh, and nobody can uh, should uh, compare or uh, make uh, the choice between two uh, um, organizations. Mm -hmm. uh, we can proceed both uh, forms, both platforms, both organizations uh, uh, in the uh, favor of the uh, people of this region or some region. But I think the key focus in BIMSTEC is on connectivity. Yes. And how do you plan to go about it? Are there any plans which the BIMSTEC countries are discussing? Uh, there are two, three uh, things which uh, one of the uh, important uh, factor uh, which we are uh, making discussion is one of the uh, Buddhist circuit is also there mm -hmm. and dis on discussion uh, easy access uh, to uh, the um, sea for the landlocked countries that is also a major concern mm -hmm. and uh, we are uh, making some preparations how we can make a conducive environment to uh, have a uh, easy access and uh, modern uh, connectivity among the member issues uh, under BIMSTEC. Uh, so no conversation today is uh, complete without discussing the issue of terror because that's a scourge that's impacting all the countries. What's Nepal's view on the, this crucial issue? Uh, Nepal always um, have its consistent policy uh, that uh, any type of acti uh, terrorist activities uh, either uh, targeted towards um, the uh, core national interest of a particular country or uh, uh, targeted against the innocent people are uh, subjectable to the uh, condemnation. We always condemn any type of uh, uh, such type of activities, no excuses, mm -hmm. and no political cover, mm -hmm. 
no any uh, uh, justification to the terrorist activities. We always uh, condemn that type of activities. We have deep sympathy to those countries which are suffer, uh, suffering, uh, uh, which have already suffered uh, the um, uh, terrorism by the terrorism, and Nepal will um, always with solidarity with them. So let's move from regional issues and of course issues like climate change and terror to something that all the countries have voiced their concern, the issue of reforms at the United Nations. What's your view on that? Nepal uh, is supportive uh, on the initiations, uh, reports, or uh, process which are undergoing in the uh, UN system. Uh, UN, we have uh, basically two concerns. One is the voices of the uh, least developed countries, uh, land of developed countries, or small uh, island countries, or broadly speaking, uh, to those uh, countries and communities has not been heard or listened properly. Mm. Existing uh, UN system is not uh, so favorable mm. for the uh, developing countries. So we want to be more representation mm. from the uh, these LDC, LLDCs uh, groups, mm. uh, more um, that type of uh, new process which can incorporate those uh, concerns uh, raised by those countries. Uh, so, um, uh, UN reforms should be started from the reform in the uh, existing Security Council mm -hmm. structure, uh, so that uh, the representation of the uh, small and uh, developing countries should be ensured. Mm -hmm. And what's your view about India's uh, position? Because India obviously wants to be a member of the reformed UNSC. Uh, yes, uh, we are positive. Uh, Nepal has uh, um, uh, made its uh, uh, positive attitude uh, time and again, mm -hmm. and we are positive and we are discussing uh, how it can be materialized. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, I really want to ask this question because this question, uh, of course, should be on the first part, but. The India-Nepal Friendship uh, Treaty of 1950 forms the bedrock of India-Nepal foreign policy relationship, but there have been calls of reviewing it and renewing it. What's the update? I mean, what's the view of the Nepal? Or does Nepal also want this policy to be scrapped? Uh, not exactly to be scrapped, but uh, it should be uh, changed. Uh, according to the change of dynamics and change context. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it was done in 1950 when there was a, uh, an autocratic regime of Rana uh, here and uh, mm, the British was just, uh, they left uh, India mm -hmm. and uh, the democratic systems in both countries were in very preliminary stage. In Nepal, uh, that was not uh, the democracy at all. Uh, so. The 1950s treaty is basically driven uh, by the security perspective and other uh, issues as well. Now the uh, situation has been changed. We should incorporate uh, those new elements. We just uh, talked about the climate change. We just talked about the trade investment mm -hmm. um, and uh, other areas. Those new issues should be incorporated uh, in the uh, Friendship Treaty. And second, some of the provisions are obsolete. Uh, they uh, uh, didn't work in the change context. And some are uh, uh, unfair as well. Mm -hmm. So that's why it is uh, under the process of reviewing uh, the EPG uh, eminent persons group uh, from both sides, uh, where the very uh, seasoned uh, diplomats and uh, politicians are there. They are working very closely and uh, I do believe that uh, after the uh, APG process and after the uh, report they submit to the uh, government of Nepal and India, mm. I think uh, we can uh, uh, bring our, our relations in newer heights in the change context, comprising all the uh, issues which are very, very important in uh, bilateral relations. So there is one country in the region 
whose stability is very important for the entire world. That's Afghanistan. Uh, usually people don't talk about Nepal-Afghanistan ties. They usually talk about China, India. And I know you must be facing so many questions that your relationship with China and relationship with India. But what's your view about situation in Afghanistan? And how can Nepal help uh, in stabilizing the situation in the country? Because that country is part of SARC. That country is part of South Asia. Yeah. Uh, uh, the uh, growing uh, instability, uh, unrest, uh, terrorist activities, and uh, the um, uh, we are also the um, victims. Uh, many Nepalese work there, and uh, time and again they are uh, being uh, targeted by the um, Taliban and other extremist groups. Uh, so we have uh, we are very uh, concerned about uh, the. <coughs> situation there, uh, having a very uh, long history, glorious civilization <coughs> and a lot of potential, uh, the problems uh, which are um, being facing by the Afghan government or, or Afghan people uh, should be uh, addressed. Uh, I'm not, uh, I don't know exactly um, uh, is there a negotiating settlement is uh, possible or not? Mm -hmm. In our country, we also we, we are also in the uh, civil war, mm -hmm. uh, violent conflict. Uh, but later on, we uh, started a very successful uh, peace process, and uh, based upon that uh, success, now Nepal is here. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I don't know uh, how uh, useful or relevant the Nepalese experience will be there, but uh, the most desirable option is uh, the uh, peaceful uh, settlement and negotiation. Mm -hmm. uh, and second, uh, the all countries, especially the big countries, uh, should be very careful uh, about uh, the uh, countries uh, like Afghanistan uh, and uh, every uh, big nation should be um, very, uh, they should refrain themselves mm -hmm. to uh, impose their agendas and other uh, concerns mm -hmm. so that uh, the people there, they can uh, determine their future. Uh, with their own, without any uh, interference. And uh, third is the international community should uh, cooperate uh, in their uh, development uh, desires mm -hmm. so that uh, even uh, conflict uh, doesn't end immediately, uh, but uh, some benefit by the development process uh, can be uh, uh, provide to the people. Well, uh, thank you so much uh, for speaking to Vion on, on a range of issues, whether it's India, Nepal ties or in uh, Nepal's ties with China or Nepal's ties with Afghanistan. Perhaps it's for the first time that Nepal is speaking on Afghanistan and present under the present government also. But thank you so much, sir. And of course, uh, we will be looking forward for that uh, big visit of uh, the Indian Prime Minister who will be visiting uh, three cities in Nepal and of course will be accorded civic reception also. So keep watching Vion for all the latest updates on that crucial and big visit of the Indian Prime Minister to Nepal.